Nearly all billionaires are seen as hardworking, innovative inspirations. Bezos revolutionized online shopping, Jobs redefined the phone, and Zuckerberg connected people on a never before seen level using the internet. But at the same time, virtually all of these guys also get mounds of criticism for being slave drivers, unsympathetic jerks, and um, lizards. However, one mega billionaire who avoids most of this criticism is Elon Musk. So is there a dark side to Elon Musk? Before we get started here, I just wanted to make it clear that this video is by no means intended to be hate towards Elon Musk. He has achieved outstanding feats in a variety of different fields, and has no doubt done more good than bad, at least in my opinion. In this video, we are simply taking a look at some of the biggest things that many people dislike about billionaires, and seeing whether or not they apply to Elon Musk as well. With that being said, to answer this question, we have to first outline the top areas of criticism for billionaires, which include labor exploitation, avoiding social slash economic responsibility, and unethical business practices. Taking a look at labor exploitation, this is something that all major companies involved with manufacturing and logistics take part in. 40% of all electronics in the world come from one factory in China called Foxconn, and the average Foxconn factory worker gets paid just $390.16 per month. Even at just 40 hours per week, their hourly rate comes out to a mere $2.44. But considering that they often work 50 to 60 hours, the reality is closer to just $2 an hour. And yes, this includes trillion dollar corporations such as Apple, Amazon, and Microsoft. Today, it's essentially impossible to buy mainstream electronics without indirectly participating in labor exploitation. As for Elon Musk, his main companies are very much involved in manufacturing and logistics, considering that they have to build and move cars as well as rockets. But the saving grace for Elon's companies is that his manufacturing can't really be outsourced, and thus he is able to keep it in-house without losing a competitive advantage. So the average Tesla and SpaceX factory worker is paid drastically more than the average Chinese factory worker used by other mega corporations. Currently, at Tesla, the average hourly rate for manufacturing workers is in the high teens. This is aside from production supervisor which is more of a managerial role. An hourly rate of $18 to $20 converts to about $37,000 to $40,000 per year. As for SpaceX, their annual wages are generally much better at $50,000 to $90,000. So these guys are actually paid quite well. But we also have to keep in mind that the average manufacturing worker at SpaceX is not really comparable to the average factory worker as they are literally putting together rockets. Considering this, both of Elon's major companies pay their manufacturing employees quite respectably. However, this isn't to say that working in the manufacturing units at these companies is the most pleasant, as they are working pretty hard. Elon Musk has commented that 80 hours per week is required to change the world, and it seems like he does implement this role within his companies, as it's quite common to hear 100 hour work weeks on the regular from Tesla and SpaceX. Also, I don't think they get any overtime pay for this work either, considering that neither company can really afford to do so. So given that they generally work double their regular working hours, Tesla's manufacturing workers actually only get about $9 to $10 per hour at the end of the day. The question of labor exploitation isn't really a black and white matter though, as while these employees are paid nearly minimum wage per hour, most of these guys were well aware of this before joining, and they often do extra work willingly. With that being said, from an objective standpoint, there is a component of labor exploitation within Musk's companies, but you can be the judge of how bad you think this is. Moving on to social responsibility, this is one of the top criticisms of many corporations, especially in the energy and oil industries. This argument, of course, originates from pollution concerns regarding these companies' activities. Elon Musk generally excels in this area, as he is one of the largest proponents of switching to clean energy. To be fair though, 
Battery production is estimated to emit 150 to 200 kilograms of CO2 per kilowatt hour of battery capacity. This is up to 74% more than emissions related to efficient conventional car production. However, over the long term, the general consensus is that switching to electric cars will massively reduce CO2 emissions. So Tesla gets the green flag. But there is one concern with the space company, which is the massive amounts of pollution released by each rocket launch. Currently, rocket-related CO2 emissions only account for 0.000059% of global CO2 emissions. Commercializing spaceflight though, as Elon Musk plans to do, may increase rocket pollution closer to aviation levels of about 2.4%. This is still just a couple of percentage points, but as pollution from other industries decline, rocket launches may actually grow to several percentage points. So today, rocket launches are not a big deal in terms of pollution, but in a couple of decades from now, it might be something we should focus on. Next up, we have economic responsibility. And in this realm, Elon Musk as well as his companies are no doubt guilty. People love to criticize Jeff Bezos for making tens of billions per year while paying nearly no taxes. But this is absolutely the same case with Elon Musk. Their respective wealth fluctuates with the stock market. However, they have, for the most part, made approximately the same amount of money this year, with Jeff Bezos standing at plus 74.1 billion and Elon Musk standing at plus 74.4 billion. Moreover, Amazon is near the end of its growth curve, while SpaceX and Tesla are just at the beginning. Thus, 74.4 billion is likely on the lower end of what Musk will make in the upcoming decade. Also, Jeff Bezos receives no stock compensation, while Elon Musk will cash out on tens of billions of dollars in stock compensation as Tesla continues to grow. Elon Musk will literally receive one full percent of Tesla for every $50 billion increase in Tesla's valuation. And when you're talking about a company worth hundreds of billions of dollars, 1% is absolutely no joke. And of course, virtually all of Elon's wealth gains will be thanks to his stock ownership, which he will likely not sell, meaning that he'll end up paying nearly 0% income taxes on the tens of billions he's making every year. Despite this, his companies receive billions of dollars in funding from taxpayers. The only reason SpaceX is alive today is arguably funding from NASA. And as for Tesla, well, it's no question that they've received hundreds of millions if not billions in tax incentives over the years. In fact, the only reason that Tesla is even profitable today is because of a government mandate requiring other car manufacturers to either produce more electric vehicles or by regulatory credits from large EV producers, which is basically just Tesla. Sure, you could argue that Tesla would still be profitable without the regulatory credits, as they would likely invest less without this revenue source. But I think you get the point that I'm trying to make. Also, as neither Tesla nor SpaceX have been very profitable for most of their lives, it's clear that Elon Musk as well as his companies have paid very little in taxes, but they have massively benefited from the government. Finally, moving on to unethical business practices, generally, this relates to companies' histories with fraud, deceit, scams, and things along those lines. But today, unethical business practices have taken on a different form with tech companies. Companies such as Google and Facebook aren't generally criticized for running scams. Rather, they're generally criticized for invasion of privacy, suppression of certain people, and censorship in general. Neither Tesla nor SpaceX are infamous for any of these criticisms, but it could be argued that Musk's tweets are not fair for investors of his companies. In the past, Elon Musk has been charged with securities fraud and was forced to step down as Tesla's chairman. But despite this, Elon Musk has continued to push the limits when it comes to taunting and teasing Tesla short sellers. Many of you guys would argue that bulls and bears investing in Tesla sign up for Musk's tweets as well. And I completely agree. People looking to invest in Tesla should be ready for any fluctuations in stock price caused by Musk's tweets. However, we also have to keep in mind that Tesla is a public company and that the CEO of a public company should act accordingly. Despite how frustrating Tesla bears may be, 
they should have a fair opportunity to short sell Tesla if that is what they want given that Tesla is a public company. So, it can be argued that Elon's tweeting is unfair and unethical to a degree. Considering all of this, Elon Musk does possess some of the characteristics that are criticized to death for other billionaires. Employees at his companies are worked pretty rigorously for relatively small pay. SpaceX and Tesla aren't as environmentally friendly as they might seem at first glance. Elon makes tens of billions per year and his companies have massively benefited from the government while him and his companies pay very little in taxes. And finally, his tweets aren't very fair to certain types of investors in Tesla. But as I said at the beginning, Elon's contributions to the EV, space, AI, and transportation industries exponentially outweigh these drawbacks in my opinion. However, I would say the same thing about Jeff Bezos and all the other top billionaires as well. So I guess my opinion doesn't mean too much in this realm. Anyways, what do you guys think about the quote unquote dark side of Elon Musk? Comment that down below. Also, if you would like to suggest future video ideas, then consider checking out our community discord. And of course, if you guys think Elon's pros far outweigh his cons, then drop a like and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari and I'll see you guys on the next one.